we're going to play a, the, the most important portion of Biden's speech. And then I want to read the pertinent blog that I wrote for that speech. Because until we understand a few concepts, it's going to really turn out that uh, people that, that Biden term about capitalist, I'm a capitalist, will hold no water. So today I'm laying out a two-part plan, not only to ease the pain that families are feeling right now, but to end this era of dependence and uncertainty and to lay a new foundation for true and lasting American energy independence. Parenthetically, just imagine if, in fact, Europe didn't have to count on Russian oil, if they were energy independent. It would change the nature of so much. The problem we're facing with gas prices has two roots. First, the pandemic. When COVID struck, demand for oil plummeted, so production slowed down worldwide. It, because of the strength and the speed of our recovery, demand for oil shot back up much faster than the supply. That's why the cost of gas began to rise last year. The second route is Vladimir Putin. The start of this year, gas was about $3.30 a gallon. Today, it's about average in 420, 422. It's higher in many states. Nearly a dollar more in less than three months. And the reason for that is because of Putin's war. And now many people are no longer buying Russian oil around the world. I banned the Russian import of oil here in America. Republicans and Democrats in Congress called for it and supported it. It was the right thing to do. But I said at the time, it's going to come with a cost. As Russian oil comes off the global market, supply of oil drops and prices are rising. Now Putin's price, rake, price hike is hitting Americans at the pump, which, uh, which brings me to the first part of my plan. To immediately increase the supply of oil, our prices are rising because of Putin's action. There isn't enough supply. And the bottom line is, if we want lower gas prices, we need to have a more oil supply right now. For U.S. oil companies that are recording their largest profits in years, they have a choice. One, they can put those profits to productive use by producing more oils, restarting idle wells, or producing on the sites they already are leasing. Giving the American people a break by passing some of the savings on to their customers and lowering the price of the pump. Or they can, as some of them are doing, exploit the situation, sit back, ship those profits to the investors, and while American families struggle to make ends meet. Look, this is a moment of consequence and peril for the world and pain at the pump for American families. It's also a moment of patriotism. I want to acknowledge those companies that have already announced they're increasing immediate production. They're investing money to produce more oil and also clean technology we need to reduce our dependence on oil in the future. They have everything they need, nothing standing in their way. And they've indicated they will be producing an extra one million barrels of oil per day, probably starting as early as this fall. That's progress. But some companies have been pretty blunt. They don't want to increase supply because Putin's price hike means higher profits. One CEO even acknowledged that they don't care if the price of a, a barrel of oil goes to $200 a barrel. They're not going to step up the production. I say enough. Enough of lavishing excessive profits on investors and payouts and buybacks when the American people are watching. The world is watching. U.S. oil companies made nearly $80 billion in profit last year. And this year, those profits are expected to continue to soar. This is the time, not the time, to sit on record profits. It's time to step up for the good of your country, the good of the world, to invest in immediate production that we need to respond to Vladimir Putin, to provide some relief for your customers, non-investors and executives. Look, I'm a capitalist. I have no problem with corporations turning to good profit. But companies have an obligation that goes beyond just their shareholders, to their customers, their communities, and their country. No American company should take advantage of a pandemic or Vladimir Putin's actions to enrich themselves at the expense of American families. Investing those profits, profits in production and innovation, 
That's what they should do. Invest in your customers. And it isn't just like, uh, it's not the patriotic thing. It's good for your business as well. Right now, oil and gas industry is sitting on nearly 9,000 unused but approved permits for production on federal lands. Or more than a million unused acres they have a right to, pr to pump on. Families can't afford that companies sit on these their hands. So, to help execute this first part of my plan, I'm calling for a use it or lose it policy. Congress should make companies pay fees on wells on federal leases they haven't used in years. And acres of public land they're hoarding without production. Companies that are already producing from these wells won't be affected. But those sitting on unused leases and idle wells will either have to start producing or pay the price for their inaction. Look, the action I'm calling for will make a real difference over time. But the truth is, it takes months, not days, for companies to increase production. That's why the next part of my plan is so important. Today, I'm authorizing the release of one million barrels per day for the next six months, over 180 million barrels. For the strategic from the from the strategic petroleum reserve this is a wartime bridge to increase oil supply until production ramps up later this year and it is by far the largest release of our net of our national reserve in our history it will provide historic amount of supply for a historic amount of time a six months bridge to the fall and we'll use the revenue from selling the oil now to restock the Strategic Petroleum Reserve when prices are lower. So, we'll be ready. We'll be ready for future emergencies. I'm at Daily Coast right now and I just posted that. Okay, here's what I wrote. President Biden did not hold back on the price gouging and profiteering oil companies and he will let them pay for it. How will he let them pay for it? If they have a lease and they opt not to use that lease and drill on that land that they've gotten a lease for, then they'll lose it or they'll pay a fine to keep it. In other words, they'll, they'll keep paying for it. In other words, you lease an apartment, you don't pay one bill for the apartment and forever have it there. So why give oil companies that type of a subsidy? So I wrote this, President Biden all but declared war on the oil companies and justifiably so. He will let them pay for producing on 9,000 leases they are hoarding. The president wants corporations to start up their idled wells and increase production to supplement the lost production from Russia. He said, many corporations, as we all know, are exploiting the situation. They're exploiting the situation uh, to milk the population for ever expanding profits. But some companies have been pretty blunt, Biden said. They don't want to increase supply because Putin's price hike means higher profits. Once they even acknowledged that they don't care about price of a barrel of oil goes to $200 a barrel. They're not going to step up the production. I say enough, Biden says, enough. And he went on to say that he's going to start charging them for those lands. We get these cycles in our economy where oil corporations gouge the American people because of the willful ignorance of too many good politicians. They continue to claim they are capitalists. They believe that the behavior of corporations is anathema to capitalism. Look, I'm a capitalist. I have no problem with corporations turning a good profit, Biden said. But companies have an obligation that goes beyond just their shareholders to their customers, their communities, and their country. No American company should take advantage of a pandemic or Vladimir Putin's actions to enrich themselves at the expense of American families. That's what he says. But here's the deal, Mr. President. President Biden and many Democrats fundamentally fail to heed the design of our economic system. These corporations are doing nothing wrong. They are doing everything they're supposed to do, these corporations are. And that is what they need to understand. They are fulfilling their task. The only stakeholders that matters to them are the, stake, are the stock shareholders and the executives. Milton Friedman, several decades ago, gave them their marching orders. They are to be unconcerned 
with doing anything socially responsible at the expense of the shareholder and with the executive bonuses. We need a bifurcated economy where we, the people, control the industries vital to our existence. We need, we still have control of the water under we the people, right? We still have control of water of the, under we the people. And it seems to work pretty well. Your, your water flow well. Now, whenever Republicans try to get private sector involved, we get lead in the water like what occurs where again? In Lansing, Michigan? Or one of those Michigan cities? In other words, no profits on what is essential. After all, a farmer nurtures food. An oil baron is simply picking up a fossil. Before anyone starts shouting communism, it is not. It is democracy. What we have now is modified fascism. And be aware that the profit motive is not what creates new, new drugs, better oil extraction techniques, or better engineering or medical procedures. Public universities are where most of the societal intellect comes from most of the time. Many corporations are but parasites that gravitate to an idea only after it seems viable. That is why corporations buy up companies. They buy something that is already done. And guess what? Most of those who create those great products and services do not partake of the eventual profits. The parasites, the corporate class keeps most of it. If we can just put that into people's heads and on, let them understand that that is what happened and all that indoctrination that you got from your inception, they've gone into the schools and they've paid to screw with your mind. And every, everybody's mind, I saw somebody in there, uh, Eric got mad because I said, you know, uh, Venezuela is sitting down on an ocean of oil larger than any other country. And Iran has a whole bunch of oil. And I'm saying, those guys should have their oil on the market. And he said, oh, are you, you're the guy who talks about human values and humanity. Yes, I do. Do you think America is, in the aggregate, is so much more humane than Venezuela? Look, I am not defending any country at all. They all have their good and their bad. But the rest of the world looks at America. We are the bastions of democracy and we gave you Trump. We are the bastions of humanity and we gave you George Floyd. And many others. And, and, and we are the bastion of systemic racism. So please don't tell me about humanity until you ask all humans in America if they feel like humanity reigns in America. Let's be clear here. So I don't judge countries by what America tells me to judge countries by. Cuba is bad. Venezuela is bad. Iran is bad. I've been to Cuba. I have Cuban friends. I have relatives in Cuba. Okay, all of us in the Caribbean do. If you think a country where it says health care is a right and one who says health care is for those who can afford it, who is more humane? You can talk about, oh, but Cuba is communist. But everybody has health care. Everybody has health care. In America, if I don't have the money, I live in the best democracy in the world. And if I don't have health care, I die. So please, let's be very, very careful how we talk about other countries being less human. Let's be very careful. Because we have problems. Others have problems. But we have problems as well. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel. And number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.